After the UPS 2976 crash, many pointed to the infamous American Airlines Flight 191, saying these two events must share the same root cause. Both involved McDonnell Douglas trijets, both lost the left engine during rotation, and both rolled violently within seconds. But when you look past the surface and begin analyzing the engineering details, the system failures, and the performance margins, you quickly realize that these two accidents are fundamentally different. Let's break it down. The visual similarities between UPS 2976 and AA191 are real, and that's why so many comparisons show up online. In both cases, you have a wide-body trijet accelerating down the runway for a maximum weight departure. Both aircraft lose their left number one engine right at rotation. Both engines move upward and over the wing instead of dropping downward. And in both cases, the aircraft enter a left roll strong enough to produce an unrecoverable situation in seconds. It's understandable why these parallels stand out. Engine separations during takeoff are extremely rare, and seeing another one happen on an aircraft with DC-10 MD-11 heritage naturally brings back memories of AA-191. But comparing the visuals isn't the same as comparing the causes. The physics behind the upward engine motion, the mechanical conditions inside the pylon, the way the aircraft systems responded, and the pilot's available performance envelope were completely different. And to understand why, we have to start with the mount failure itself. Even though both accidents involved the same broad outcome, the left engine leaving the aircraft, the underlying cause could not be more different. The DC-10 on AA-191 had undergone a maintenance procedure at American Airlines that removed the engine and pylon as a single unit. That method, which used a forklift to support the pylon during removal and reinstallation, was not approved by McDonnell Douglas. It created a situation where the pylon could twist or shift slightly during the process. During reinstallation, the pylon's aft bulkhead struck the wing clevis hard enough to create a hidden crack in the bulkhead surrounding the spherical bearing. That crack continued to grow, undetected, until the moment of takeoff. In short, AA191 engine mount was damaged in the hangar, not through normal flight stress or time and service fatigue. UPS 2976 is a completely different story. The MD-11's aft mount lugs and the spherical bearing outer race showed progressive fatigue cracking that existed before takeoff. This was not the result of improper handling or an unapproved procedure. The aircraft was still within its scheduled inspection interval. The lubrication and partial disassembly task required for mount servicing had been completed just weeks earlier. This failure was driven by long-term cyclic stress in a high-time cargo aircraft, not improper maintenance, if AA191 failed because someone cracked the mount during a maintenance shortcut, UPS 2976 failed because decades of load cycles eventually pushed the internal components beyond their fatigue limits. This alone makes the comparison inaccurate. One failure was introduced by hand, the other developed on its own. One of the reasons people associate these accidents is the unusual upward motion of the engines. When most people think of engine separations, they imagine the engine falling downward. But both AA191 and UPS 2976 show the engine pivoting up and arcing over the wing. This isn't a coincidence, it's physics. During rotation, three forces act simultaneously. The nose is pitching up. The engine is producing maximum thrust. The internal rotor mass is spinning at extremely high RPM. If the aft mount fails first, which happens in both accidents, the remaining forward structure becomes the pivot point. Because the rotor is spinning, gyroscopic precession converts the upward pitch into a torque that acts 19 degrees ahead in the direction of rotation. The result is a twist that forces the engine up and sideways, not down. In AA191, that torque was acting on a structure that was already cracked from improper maintenance. In UPS 2976, the torque acted on a pylon mount weakened by fatigue until the forward structure also failed from overload. So yes, both engines move upward, but for two completely different underlying structural reasons. The upward arc is not what connects these accidents. It's what mechanically separates them.
Although both aircraft suffered engine separations, the system-level consequences were dramatically different. When the DC-10 lost its engine, the separation tore through critical hydraulic lines that powered the left-wing outboard leading-edge slats. Without hydraulic pressure, the slats were no longer locked. Aerodynamic forces pushed them back into the retracted position. But because the electrical power for the slat disagree system was also lost, the pilots had no slat warning, no stick shaker, and the captain lost some of his primary instruments. This meant the pilots unknowingly flew at what they believed was a safe engine out climb speed, V2. However, with the slats retracted, the actual stall speed was much higher. The left wing stalled, rolled past 19 degrees, and the aircraft became unrecoverable. UPS 2976 experienced a much more violent chain of failures. When the number one engine left the wing, all thrust on the left side was immediately lost. Debris was then ingested into the MD-11's tail-mounted number two engine. Video evidence shows clear compressor stalls, meaning the tail engine was no longer producing continuous thrust and may have been surging repeatedly. This left the aircraft with essentially only one reliable engine, the number three engine on the right wing. And unlike the DC-10 in AA-191, UPS-2976 didn't have time or altitude to stabilize. It was still just feet above the runway. Beyond the thrust loss, the separation also damaged the left wing's airflow, likely affecting lift and increasing drag. Each compressor stall from the tail engine produces a pressure pulse that disrupts airflow over the horizontal stabilizer and rudder, directly affecting control authority. This combination Asymmetric thrust, aerodynamic disruption, and unstable tail thrust leaves no transport aircraft with enough performance margin to climb away from the runway. AA-191 lost hidden slats and stall warning. UPS-2976 lost two engines and a portion of the left wing's aerodynamic stability. These are fundamentally different aerodynamic challenges. This is the most misunderstood part of both accidents, especially among those who see the two events as similar. The key point is simple. AA-191 had some theoretical climb margin. UPS-2976 had almost none. The DC-10 managed to climb to roughly 300 feet. It still had two functioning engines. If the slats had remained extended and the stall warning system had stayed online, the aircraft might have been controllable. The NTSB later stated that the aircraft should have been flyable under normal engine out procedures. The fatal event was the uncommanded slat retraction, something the pilots could not detect due to the simultaneous electrical loss. UPS 2976 never had a realistic chance. The aircraft gained roughly 30 to 50 feet of altitude, not enough for any type of recovery. With the left engine gone, the tail engine surging, and the right engine producing full thrust, the MD-11 was in an extreme asymmetric thrust condition at a height where no transport aircraft can be stabilized. The left wing's damaged airflow reduced lift. The tail engine's compressor stalls made pitch and yaw control unpredictable. The pilots countered the initial roll effectively, but with no altitude, no airspeed buffer, and a burning wing, they had no opportunity to convert control inputs into a stable climb. Saying the pilot should have saved it fundamentally misrepresents the physics. UPS-2976 was already beyond recovery the moment the aft mount failed. UPS-2976 and AA-191 are two of the most visually dramatic engine separation accidents ever recorded. It's easy to put them in the same category, but the reality is that one was caused by an unapproved maintenance shortcut while the other was caused by long-term fatigue inside aging hardware that still met its inspection requirements. The systems that failed, the aerodynamics that followed, and the aircraft's performance windows were completely different. If you'd like a deeper dive into how MD-11 pylon mounts age, why legacy inspection intervals may no longer be enough, or how fatigue and spherical bearings can grow inside the pylon structure, let me know in the comments. I can break that down in a future video. 